Hello, it's Duncan. My mission at the moment is to understand the JetBrains KTOR HTTP library. So last week I wrote some tests for one of the example projects with a view to comparing KTOR with HTTP for K, the server as a functional alternative. To be a fair comparison, I wanted to make sure that I run the same tests against KTOR and HTTP for K. This is something of a problem, as they have a quite different approach to in-memory testing. This week, then, I'll look at re-implementing part of KTOR's domain-specific language to target HTTP for K, so that the same test can be used to ensure that we implement the same behaviours. And on the way, we'll learn how to implement a cheap and cheerful DSL in Kotlin. We left the last episode having written some tests or some additional tests for the customer routes. And these are really going through the paths that we see in the customer routes. So get has either all the customers or no customers found. And so we have a test for no customers found or all the customers. And it turns out I missed add customer. So I've added a test down here somewhere for adds a customer and returns a 415 when there is no customer in the body. Actually, now I can't remember what 415 is. Let's have a look. Oh, well, we don't see it here. It must happen because of an exception in receive customer, I guess, whatever that's doing. Now, what I want to do is implement the same functionality with HTTP 4K so that we can compare and contrast them. And in order to make sure it's the same functionality, I'd like to run the same tests against the HTTP 4K version. So that's these customer root tests here. The problem is that these use this test application, which JetBrains wrote somewhere, which doesn't actually run a server. It just boots up enough of KTOR to handle requests and responses in memory, which is great. The problem is that we end up using this special client then to talk to it. And that client doesn't know how to talk to HTTP 4K. I did try running HTTP 4K as a server and using KTOR as a proxy to it so that we could gradually migrate routes across. That turned out to be harder than I thought. But I have a cunning plan, and that's to try and create a version of these tests that looks identical, but actually talks to HTTP 4K. So I have added HTTP for K to our dependencies. And I'm going to take our customer root tests and I'm going to just duplicate them as customer root HTTP for K tests. OK, then here we are. Every one of these tests is a block with test application with. Now that is here. But we could get our test called a different version if we copied that back in here and put a version of that down inside this test. So now all of these will be calling this one. Now for Ktor, this block is a suspend function of application test builder something, something, something. But I think the only thing we're actually using from it is this client. So this client is defined in this application test builder. And I don't know the type of it. It's create client. Uh, ah, it's HTTP client. There you go. Now, we can't use Ktor's HTTP client, but we might be able to use something from HTTP 4K and give it the same name. So let's go back. And I'm going to change the type of this block. I don't care about suspend, really. I'm going to call it, I don't know what, we'll call it test context, for want of a better phrase. And that doesn't exist, so let's create it. And we'll just put it in this file. Now then, we don't want to use this test application here, but we do want to invoke this block. So what I think we'll do is we will say in here, we'll create a test context, and we will invoke block on it. So I can get rid of this. And now we can see that this compiles, but it doesn't know what a client is. If I scroll up a bit as well, yes, we get the same issue. So client is something we need to be able to call delete on or post on or so on. Well, in HTTP 4K, that's really just a handler. So I wonder whether we could say that our test context has a val client, which is an HTTP handler. And that now allows this to compile, but we're going to need to be able to call post on our client, which is an HTTP handler. And that's not really the way that HTTP 4K works. We're also then going to have to pass some sort of block into that thing. This is looking complicated, so I'm going to fold this one away and ignore it for a bit. And the same with this one. So we can just work with delete, for example. 
If we just ask IntelliJ, what could it do to make this compile? The answer is, it could create an extension function, delete. Well, let's do that. And target class or interface. Hmm. Um, yes, let's choose that one and see what happens. Goodness me, I really didn't want that. So let's undo that and we'll write it ourselves. What we want is that HTTP handler had a function that was called delete that took a path as a string. That makes this compile, which is good. But how would we implement that in HTTP for K? Well, I suppose the answer is that we'd say, I'm going to take my handler and invoke given a request. And in fact, IntelliJ is suggesting exactly the right thing, I think. So that is a request with a method of delete and the path. You can see this redness here. We're storing up trouble for later, but let's push on with this one. That compiles as far as here. And now we have an issue that the data that comes back from a response doesn't compile. And it doesn't compile because the response status here is from HTTP 4K status because our response is now an HTTP 4K response, not whatever was coming back from Ktor. That's interesting, but I think we can fix it by saying, let's add ourselves a version of assert equals. It's not giving us that choice, but I think we can do it. So if we had a function that was assert equals and took this type here, which is HTTP status code from Ktor, and this type here, which is status from HTTP 4K, then we could write this. And I suspect the easy way to do this is to say that if we take the codes out of them, they should be the same. So if we say expected.value, that's an int, and the actual dot code, that's also an int. But we have broken this test context here because we've now said it needs a client. Well, actually, that's rather good because this is the point at which we want to build an HTTP for K application in some sort of sense. I think for now, at least, though, what I'm going to say is that we have val. This is effectively going to be our roots, which is going to be an HTTP for K handler. And we'll just say to do so we can get things to compile and pass that into roots. Okay, it feels like this has promise. Let's go up and find some other places it's not compiling. Okay, here's one. Response.body as text doesn't exist. Let's see if we can create an extension function for that. Oh, we can, good. We'll put it on response. And it's offering status, but I think we need string. And in HTTP 4K terms, this is body string. Okay, let's F2 and find another issue. This is another extension we need on HTTP 4K handler. So we'll go down to the one we've got, which was um, here. And I think we should just be able to say get path is the same as invoking method get on a path. That leaves post. Now, in this case, we've got a bit more of a problem because we're posting and then we're doing some th other things around the thing we're trying to post. This is another bit of a DSL here from Ktor. Let's see how we can back into that. We are going to want a version here of post and that would invoke method post. But if we go back up, it doesn't know what to do with this block here. I think I'm going to split this so we can see both parts of it, the bit we're trying to implement and how we're implementing it. Let's try split right. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we have the thing we're trying to implement. And on the right-hand side down here, we have our post. Now we can make this block bit compile by having this take another parameter of type function. So I'm just going to put it down like that. And this would take a thing we're going to call a block. And its type is something to, I don't know what yet, but so I'll say unit. And that makes this bit compile. But now this block has to have a method called content type or set body. Those feel like things we can do to an HTTP for K request. So I think we'll take request and make it the receiver on that block. And now maybe it will offer us, it doesn't, that's a shame. But I think what we can do is we can say the same sort of thing as we did here. 
that we can add an extension to our request. I'll put it in here for now and we'll say that we have a fun request.content type and that's going to have to take the Kator content type, which is uh, this content type. That's good. We'll come around to how to get that to compile in a minute. So I'll just do that there. But we do know, I think, that it can just return unit. And then set body we can handle by saying set body. And this is just a string. OK, then, how can we implement this content type and body? Move this over there just a bit so we can see more. And think it through, I don't think that we can have these as extensions on request. And the reason is that in here, we're fundamentally mutating a thing. We're mutating the request that we want to be finally posted. Therefore, the receiver of this block has to be something that can store that state for us in some way. And I'm guessing, let's call it request context. So if that was request context, then this would have to be request context as would that. And oh dear, it turns out the request context is already a name that we're using. So let's call this request builder context because that's a word. Well, actually it's three words. Okay then, what does a request builder context look like? Well, it's going to be a class. And I guess that means as we own it, we can move these things as methods. So we'll put it down there. And now it looks to me like if I was to start this thing, giving it a basic request, then content type could morph that. So now for content type, what I want to do is I want to replace this request with one that has a content type, the new content type. So we will make that a block body, which means we can get rid of the unit. And we'll say that what we want to say in here is request is the request that we had. And I'm looking for set content type, but I'm not finding it. So I think we'll just finesse it for now. We'll say request with a header. Oh, the completion was good there. Let's go to it. Request with a header of content type and the content type to string. Not sure that will be good for us. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to say that we require that the content type is content type application JSON. And then we will just use HTTPVK's content type dot application JSON as a header value. So we very much only work for the case that we have, but we could expand it if we needed to. Okay, going back, this can't happen because our request here is a val, but it's the nature of builders that they are mutable. So let's make that a var. After that messing about, set body is going to be a bunch easier. It's just going to be that we say request dot body with the string. And we want to replace our current request with the revised one. And now we've done that, what is our post going to do? Well, it's got a bit more complicated. We want to make sure that it returns a response. Keep us honest. And first of all, it's going to build a context. We'll call it a builder is my request context builder on a request request of method post and the path. And we call this request context builder. Now it lets the block have a go at it. So that will be builder block. And now the handler can handle that request. So that is this dot invoke the builders request. And we need to return that. Now we could cast a delete and get in the same way, but we don't need to. So I think we'll just sort of shorten those a bit. And we can always add in this block if we need to do later. And that I think compiles everywhere. Let's just F2 to see what issues we have. Some unused imports. We're not yet implementing our roots, so we're not using the customer storage, etc. But apart from that, everything compiles without warnings. So if we now compare our old tests, the custom root tests, with our new ones, the custom root HTTP for K tests, you can see they have different imports and a different name. But apart from that, the tests are identical until we get to the place where we are adding in our thunks to HTTP for K. Now, of course, we may have errors in those thunks, which we won't find until we wire up these roots. 
but the fact that the text representation at least of our test is identical will give us confidence that we are covering all the tested behavior of the Ktor app when we re-implement in HTTPK. Now obviously these tests can't pass yet, so I'm going to disable them. Or I thought I was. That's weird. Or JUnit. Ah, oh, we appear to be using JUnit 4, not JUnit 5. Uh, is there ignore? There is. And now let's run all of our tests. And we can see these ones are waiting for us next week. This tactic of making a source compatible API is quite an interesting one. I think it only works because of type inference and because we haven't actually specified the type of this. If we said it in here, you'd see it was response. But in here, this is HTTP response. So they certainly don't compile to the same thing, but it's a cute trick nonetheless, and one to keep in your back pocket for times like these. Next week then, now we have the tests, we can look at implementing them with HTTP for K. And once I've done that, I'm going to use it to compare the two APIs. I think that'd be quite interesting. If you do, then please subscribe to the channel. Like this video, so I know you like more of this sort of content. And maybe buy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.